Okay, breaking news uh, right here during the show. Doc Rivers out as head coach of the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, he was asked about whether or not he would come back. He gave a, eh, yeah, of course I'm coming back. I have two years left of my contract. That was the right answer. That's the way he's supposed to handle it. You're not supposed to say, I don't know. Um, if we go back timeline-wise, I don't know that anybody ever thought that Doc Rivers was a Daryl Morey guy. Um, so none of this, not, and coaches getting fired, none of this is surprising at all. I mean, we realize like all the guys that have been in the finals recently have all been fired. Right. Except for, well, actually, yeah, even the Celtics, that was a little different. Um, that's what this job is. I mean, you look back at the long tenure in the NBA for for head coaches, like pull that page up on Wikipedia where it'll go like date hired to date, you know, like it, you'll look at it being like, oh, my God, 17 of the guys were hired in the last 16 months. Like this doesn't make any sense. So um I'm not I'm not shocked by any of this because I think it's the job and specific to Philadelphia. I think there were a lot of reasons. I like Doc. I am biased. I'll admit. Um, I think people dismiss how good he can be with the veteran guys with big time resumes and understanding how they need to be kind of managed as people for the challenges of a long NBA regular season. Uh, I believe that. But I can no longer argue against his resume with the blown leads. The Atlanta one was the all-timer. Um, and I think there was some stuff with the Clippers where it just felt like he was stubborn in some of the rotations that weren't really making a lot of matchup sense there. Uh, but I defer to the blame on on players with this way more than I do with any of the coaches. Rarely will you hear me say, hey, I think this coach is getting in the way of this team. Because I think ultimately it's on the players, just like it was against Atlanta. Like Ben Simmons having a meltdown is not Doc Rivers' fault. Uh, that's who Ben Simmons is, as we saw again with a dude that can't even play in games. I promise this is not turning into a Ben Simmons rant. We'll get back to coaches here quickly. But a guy who's not even playing in games consistently the last few years, deciding to post a picture of the Sixers losing to the Celtics from his house and his nice TV. Not surprised he has a nice TV, so that's not really what I'm talking about there. But like the the math that you would have to do in your head would be like, hey, this is a good idea. I don't even fucking play, but let me make fun of the Sixers. That made me almost want the Sixers to win that game, almost. Um, but again, that's a different topic that I'm sure we'll get to do again at some point when he's not playing in his fancy outfits, talking about how good he's going to be when he comes back. All right, so back to the doc part of it. Like, is it his fault that Harden is scared to death in Game 7? Is it his fault that you know Embiid became predictable and didn't fight back in the third quarter. You know, that's why I just have a hard time blaming the coaches, even if I understand why they all lose their jobs. Uh, and not thinking that Daryl and Doc were going to be actually the best pairing, because I just don't know that they would see it the same way. So what does that mean? Man, welcome to the tour bus party. This is like a bunch of five-star high school kids going to every major college campus to try to figure out where they want to play football. Um, Monty Williams, Coach Bud, you know, stop me if you've heard these names before. The Bud one would probably be a tough sell in Philly <laughs> after how bad the Milwaukee thing went. And yes, to be fair, he was dealing with something that's absolutely tragic and losing his brother in that same week. But there's a lot of respect for Bud. There's a lot of respect for Monty, too. I'm a, I'm a little surprised how much the NBA world seems to be in love with Monty, the coach. Uh, he was 34 and 39 before Chris Paul got there to Phoenix. Chris Paul's the reason this Phoenix Suns turned around. I know everybody can make fun of me for my Chris Paul love with that, but that's that's a fact. That that is not that cannot be argued. They were kind of like, are we any good? And then Chris Paul shows up and they make it to the NBA Finals. So I think that had more to do with it than anybody that was coaching it. So I imagine Daryl's going to have to get somebody that's far more aligned with his vision and. Anyone that's his numbers based is Daryl. Like they look very, very hard at like, hey, points per possession, this shot, shot quality here. Like what, like what are we doing that's specific to this matchup? Where if you're a feel guy, you know, there's just going to be a lot of times where I feel like the front office and coaching staff are seeing the game differently. So I'd imagine more alignment um, with whoever they would go coaching wise. But what I would disagree with is. You know, maybe Embiid can be salvaged as far as late game stuff and going, you know, once the playoffs crank up and people are more tuned in on you on the catch and all of these things you need to do, I think that could be fixed. I don't, I don't think some new, like, 
I just don't think some new coach all of a sudden unlocks some version of Harden. <laughs> so you guys, I'm not even going to go down that road right now. You guys have fun with that one and all the debates, especially if you're a Philly fan, like as if it's like, no, no, this is the first time it's Doc's fault that Harden looked like this. Um, enjoy, because I've got nothing else to say about it. I've already said it a million times. Yeah.